Hey, Trinity Church, what's going on? Ronnie Mack, Friday Devotion. Hey, let me ask you a question. What is your greatest weakness? No, seriously. Tell me about one area that is a weakness. And do not tell me you don't have any. Come on now. Let's be real. If you're like me, you don't want to admit your weaknesses to yourself, let alone to other people. Revealing our weakness is one of the last things we want to do in life. We live in a time and a culture where weaknesses is considered bad and strength is considered good. Let's look at our scripture today in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. The Lord says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul's response, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults, hardships, persecution, and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let me set the stage for this dialogue between God and Paul. See, God gave Paul a vision and a revelation of heaven. And to keep Paul from becoming conceited, from having a big head, he also gave Paul a thorn in the flesh. I'm not going to get into what the thorn is. There's been so much speculation between biblical scholars. It's not important what the thorn is. There was a thorn. And God said it. I believe it. So let's move on. If God wanted us to know what the thorn was, he would have put it in the Bible. Notice that Paul prayed and asked the Lord three times, not one time, not two times, but three times to remove the thorn, but God refused. Paul went to the Lord and prayed, asking God to remove it, but God said, no, saints, it's okay to ask, but God has the final say, and he might say yes, he might say no, or he might say wait. So weakness it's not really a bad thing because it makes us rely on the Lord and should push us to pray for wisdom and guidance that the Lord may desire to use a weakness in us to bring glory to himself. Weaknesses make us feel vulnerable and they can become frightening at times. We tend to want to avoid or conceal our weaknesses. As a result, we may come up with all kinds of strategies to help protect our weaknesses. I want to be transparent with you today, Trinity Church. See, I had a reading deficit in elementary school, and in order to avoid being called on to read aloud in class, I would come up with all kinds of excuses. Gotta go to the bathroom. I need to go see the nurse. I would even disrupt the class to get put in the hallway. Anything to keep from having to read aloud in class and have the kids laugh and tease me. But when we embrace our weaknesses, the grace and the power of God will allow us to be used for his purposes. So even though today I still carry some of the effects of that learning deficit, I don't allow it to prevent me from preaching or teaching the word of God. Because I know God's grace is sufficient and his power is made perfect in my weakness. God's power is actually manifested in your weakness. So when you are weak, God's power intervenes in our weakness, and it empowers us to do the will of God. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God takes our weaknesses and uses them for his glory. This is the opposite of what the world is saying. The world says, be all you can or want to be. The emphasis is on you and not on God. YOLO, bro, you only live once, go for it. Are you kidding me? But what Paul is saying is, I will boast all the more in my weakness, insult, and hardship, and persecution, and in difficulties, so that Christ
Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, but when I am weak, then I am strong. See, God chooses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. He chooses the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chooses the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. We can't boast saints because everything we do for the kingdom of God is done through the power of God working in us and through us. This is a difficult lesson to learn and even harder to put into practice because we want to handle our own business. And fear of failure is not an option. So in order for weakness to be transformed into power, we have to come to the end of ourselves. You have to decrease so that Christ may increase. Realizing that God has not called you to walk alone in these struggles that you face on a daily basis. And in this pandemic has brought many struggles and difficulties. I don't know where you are in your journey today. But God has promised us in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Maybe you say, Pastor Matt, I have prayed, I have fasted, but these struggles remain. Trust that God will enable you to endure because even Jesus, instead of conquering Satan by his divine power, conquered by weakness, yielding himself to be crucified to death on the cross. See, Jesus committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, saints, he entrusted himself to him, the Father who judged justly. He trusted the Father. Will you trust the Father and become weak so that you can become strong in Christ. Remember Trinity Church, spread the gospel and not the virus. I'm running back.